The Sony NEX 5R was released in 2012 and is Sony's seventh NEX camera. I've used six different NEX cameras in the last four months and I must say, there's a few different reasons why the NEX 5R might be my favorite. Let's just dive right into the good things about the NEX 5R, starting with the price point, okay? I paid $104 for this camera and it shipped from South Korea. It did take over a month to arrive, but if you're patient and you're okay just waiting that time frame, usually you can get cameras for free shipping or very low cost shipping, $4, $5, $10 from overseas sellers. And they're always at a lower price point because overseas sellers usually have a higher volume of these cameras to offer the US market, okay? So $104 I got this camera very reliably for, and they range anywhere from $100 to $180 to $200. So somewhere between the $1 and $200 price range, you should be able to pick up an NEX 5R. You do get a 16.1 megapixel sensor, um, but I think this is actually a little bit of a different sensor than the NEX 5N, even though it's the same megapixel count. I think they did something in this camera where they shifted um, a few pixels dedicated for uh, phase detection autofocus, okay? So there are some extra pixels that are either changed or dedicated with a sensor specifically to be able to get better autofocus performance. And I definitely see that, especially on the video side. Speaking of video, we get full manual video control, which we did not see in a few of the other Sony NEX series cameras like the NEX5 or the NEX3. This camera shoots in 24 frames a second and 60 frames a second, both 1080p video at AVC-HD. So that's an older codec but it still gets decent results. I don't love the codec. It definitely is a little more compressed and doesn't retain as much information as like an XAVCS codec would. Um, but AVC HD will be fine for most people's needs. In 2023, I'd say most people are not looking to do 10 bit color and need the most color science, especially if you're looking for a cheap camera like this. You're probably just wanting to enter into the game or have a hobbyist style camera body. Um, and 1080p at AVC HD will get the job done for most people. With the 5R, we also see some incredible ergonomic body improvements to the design of the camera. We get an awesome control dial that can change shutter speed. I think you can actually also map aperture to that control dial as well, but I'd always prefer this to be shutter speed because that's how all of my other cameras have the shutter speed placement at the rear thumb dial. So huge ergonomic improvement to add that, that thumb wheel control here on the back of the camera. We also see the addition of a dedicated ISO button, which we did not see on the Sony NEX 5N or the NEX 5. We do get a function button on the front of the camera near the shutter release here that you can map a few different buttons to or a few different functions rather, which are super helpful to be able to quickly access a few different functions uh, by the touch of a quick button. We didn't see this on the NEX 5 or 5N. My favorite feature, frankly, is going to be this awesome flip up screen, okay? We get a fully flip up screen with the NEX 5R that also even kind of tilts down a little bit. So it's like a tilt down 45 degrees and fully tilt up 180 degrees so you can be able to film yourself vlog style or set it up on a tripod to be able to film yourself and see yourself from a tripod kind of setup. Also, I just love the white color that the 5N comes in. It's such a nice looking white color, very vibrant, very bright white, and I don't have a lot of white cameras, so I think it's a sweet addition to the NEX line that's white color. To summarize the good, it's pretty much everything good about the Sony NEX 5N with a few autofocus improvements and a lot of ergonomic improvements with a flip screen, a control dial, dedicated function button, dedicated ISO button, and it's just a lot better as far as ergonomics are concerned over the 5 and the 5 end. I'm gonna briefly talk about a few cons to the NEX 5R starting with the build quality is not the best. It definitely feels like a cheaper plastic build quality, and I frankly would be concerned um, letting this camera fall and hit the ground. I don't want any camera to fall and hit the ground, obviously, but this camera in particular, it just feels very light, feels cheaply made. Um, so yeah, build quality doesn't, doesn't get the best uh, review from me personally. When you compare this to the NEX 6, you can see a vastly different type of build quality in the NEX 6, way better build quality on that guy. As far as sensor performance, you're gonna get a lot of the same good as the NEX 5N, and you're also gonna get a lot of the bad from the NEX 5N, specifically with low light performance. So both autofocus and ISO performance suffer when you get into low light circumstances. So my encouragement to you would be, don't take this camera into low light environments. 
play to this camera's strengths, and it does really well in more well-lit studio-type environments like this, okay? So shoot in high-quality light, and you're gonna get high-quality results. You, of course, get the older menu system from all the rest of the NEX series cameras, which I don't love, but it does get the job done. You can change your settings, which are okay. Um, but again, it just feels like you're kind of stuck in the past. This camera is 2012, and you're just still stuck in that 2010, 2011, 2012 era as far as menu technology. I don't love the tech behind this camera. Image quality is decent, but the technology feels pretty old when you get into the menu. You, of course, don't have any type of log shooting on this camera, and you have really no uh, picture profiles of any kind. You are able to choose a creative style, and I've mentioned this maybe before in other NEX reviews, but I often shoot in the portrait mode, okay? I set it to the creative style portrait setting, and I lower my contrast by negative two or negative three, and leave my saturation at zero, uh, not plus anything, not minus anything, leave it just as is, and then my sharpening, I usually minus by one, so I can add sharpening back in post-production if I need. I tend to find that this is the best setting for most of these NEX series cameras, and so that's what I'd recommend to you if you're wanting to get the best color in video specs. And then, of course, as you make those uh, adjustments, it's not gonna affect the raw file for photos, okay? So this is mostly for if you're shooting JPEGs, or uh, video mode, okay? You're gonna wanna change those settings. Otherwise, if you're shooting just raw photos, it doesn't really matter because those creative styles don't affect the raw format. Just doing a quick vlog style test with the NEX 5R, shooting on the 20 millimeter F1.8 Sony lens. Um, I'm using the built-in on-camera microphone, so the audio is not gonna sound great, especially in this large echoey room, but you can see, with nice natural window light coming through. This vlog, this vlog style, it really doesn't look bad. It's doing okay at tracking with me here, you know, so I wouldn't mind using this for a vlog camera. It's really not a large camera. It's not very heavy. It's actually getting pretty good pleasing results with that custom picture profile that I set. So I would say, it's a pass for the vlog setup. In my opinion, the NEX 5R certainly is the best value out of the NEX 5 line. The NEX 5 is really only good for photography needs. The 5N has a few updates to make a better performance for shooting video and photos, but the NEX 5R has all the ergonomic improvements that I wish the NEX 5N had, okay? So it really is top tier on the NEX 5 lineup. There also is the NEX 5T, which I'm not going to do a review on on this channel, because that camera is essentially this exact camera with a very marginal increase to uh, update the camera with NFC technology, which is like near field communication, to allow file transfers to go a little bit quicker from a mobile device to a camera. Honestly, to me, it's kind of a gimmick that I would never really used in the first place. So the 5T is essentially this exact camera with all of the same pros. So if you find that camera, it's a great option for a lot of reasons. But the problem with that is because it's a little bit newer, it's just one iteration higher than the NEX 5R, okay? It's gonna, you're gonna see it for a higher price point. So it might be 20 to 30% more expensive to go with the 5T over the 5R, and they really are gonna get you the same image quality and build quality, okay? So I really think of all the five options, the 5, 5N, 5R, and 5T, the 5R is by far the best option for anyone looking to get into photo or video stuff in uh, the Sony mirrorless ecosystem. I'm going to do a review where I compare all of the Sony NEX cameras side by side and explain which ones are my favorites and which ones are the worst, okay? Because you, you can maybe sort of infer that from my YouTube videos if you look at them individually, but I'm gonna do one where I compare all of them to help those of you who want a more, uh, a broader glance to just very quickly review all of those cameras and compare my thoughts and my opinions about how each of them stack up against each other, okay? So be on the lookout for that review, but with this review with the review of the 5R that rounds out the rest of our NEX 5 series of cameras. Uh, there's a lot more coming on this channel. So thank you guys so much for taking time to watch this video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Much love.